it's just a little reminder, you know, that people haven't forgotten. Gone, but not forgotten. How the city of Richmond is remembering a fallen officer. One year after the death of Richmond police officer Daniel Ellis, we'll show you what one Richmond restaurant is doing to honor his memory. This is the first juvenile. Tragedy hits the Red River Gorge after an 11 year old dies on a camping trip. We're talking to rescue crews who say this death is tough for them to deal with. This is WKYT News at 6. A lot can change in a year, but what hasn't changed is how much a fallen Richmond police officer meant to his community. You're watching WKYT on the CW Lexington. I'm Miranda Combs. It's been one year today since Officer Daniel Ellis lost his life. He was shot while investigating a robbery. Right now, Officer Ellis is being remembered at Richmond's annual Turkey Bowl between Richmond police and fire. WKYT's Monique Blair is live with our top story. Now, Monique, this game has been a bittersweet event for the community. Hi, Miranda. Yes, it was definitely a bittersweet night out here on Medicine Central's football field. Tonight was the sixth annual Turkey Bowl flag football team, be, be, flag football game between Richmond police officers and Richmond firefighters. Now, this game is well known as a very fun event for a really good cause because each year people bring a canned good to donate to God's pantry. But this day is also the first anniversary of what was an incredibly sad day for so many people who live here in Richmond. One year ago today, Richmond police officer Daniel Ellis died from his injuries after he was shot while investigating a robbery. Today before the game, both the firefighters and the officers took several moments to honor their co-worker and their friend. Officer Ellis's wife Katie was also here. She told me it means so much to her to have her first responder family surrounding her on this difficult day. I knew that today was going to be really tough, um, but just like today, last year, I wasn't ever alone. Um, I'm with my extended family um, here with the police officers and the firefighters. Um, there was all hands on deck um, last November to make sure that Daniel got to the hospital, that you know we were able to say goodbye. Now, Officer Ellis's four-year-old son delivered the game ball to the players, and Officer Ellis's cousin sang a special song that was written especially for Officer Ellis. I'm sure you are all wondering who won this game. Well, the final score was 29 to 14, which the, with the Richmond police officers winning the game. Reporting live in Richmond, Monique Blair, WKYT. Very fitting tonight. Thanks, Monique. It's not just first responders honoring Officer Ellis. Businesses in Richmond are reaching out to the police department to show them they've still got their back. WKYT's Mike Linden continues our top story team coverage. It's been one year since the death of Richmond police officer Daniel Ellis. But now one year later, employees at a Richmond area Domino's Pizza are putting pizzas together to deliver to the police. Beginning with the morning shift, employees at the Eastern Bypass Domino's Pizza franchise are feeding the police. Manager Kelly Bones says the community of Richmond has done a great job at rallying around the police and the Ellis family, but she says now it's her turn. Bones says Officer Ellis's death hit her on a personal level as her father was an Illinois state trooper. She says on a difficult day like the one year anniversary of Officer Ellis's death, she just wants to deliver happiness any way she can. It's just all about togetherness. We come behind each other, we stand behind each other. It's, it, you're, you don't feel in Richmond that you're all alone in the community. You feel like you've got somebody that's got your back especially the police department. Bone says the deliveries will be split up amongst the day. That way, all of the police officers that work today are fed. In Richmond, Mike Linden, WKYT. And the Domino's franchise will also accept and deliver orders from anyone in the community for the police department. We are also tracking a tragic story out of Wolf County tonight. Search and rescue crews say an 11 year old boy from Louisville was killed last night when a tree fell and landed on his tent. Crews tell us the boy was on a camping trip with his Boy Scout group. WKYT Sabira Rayford is talking to investigators. Bruce Otto is not shy to the outdoors. I've been an outdoor 
a hiker all my life. The former Boy Scout from Louisville says he frequently camps at the Red River Gorge, but today he learned that a fellow Boy Scout lost his life while at the gorge. We don't think about it. We don't think it's going to happen to us, our friends, but it does happen. 11 year old Jack was camping with his troop last night when the unimaginable happened after getting in his tent for bed. It was maybe an 18 inch diameter tree uh, and it was just rotten at the base and uh, unfortunately it fell and went through the tent. Just within minutes of being out here I came across what looks to be a rotten tree that collapsed. Search and rescue teams say unfortunately that's not uncommon. I mean we hear them fall all the time when we're you know out doing rescues. It's not that uncommon for trees to be falling so um, you just do need to be mindful, you know, when you're around one of those trees, you never know what condition a tree could be in. John May says he's seen a lot of tragedy during his 13 years as a search and rescue volunteer, but he says this has been the toughest. Uh, this is the first juvenile that, uh, that we've had to really deal with like this. And, you know, it just, especially if you have children of your own, I mean, it's just heart wrenching to, to really you know, see the, the pain and suffering that the family member and the friends are going through. May says Jack's father was at the campsite when the tree collapsed. In Wolf County, Sabir Rayford, WKYT. A Louisville TV station reports that the Lincoln Heritage Council will be offering grief counseling to members and volunteers. The quiet weather weekend that we have been enjoying out there with some nice daytime temperatures is of course wrapping up out there and you can see oh this is depressing to me we're just barely past six o'clock and we're looking to the outside and the sun has already set my friends there you go it's still a beautiful shot for you as we're looking back toward downtown lexington where it's likely uh, getting uh, a little bit of a buzz uh, with uh, the upcoming game here in a little bit right now 59 degrees with the feels like temperature 59 northeasterly wind around six miles per hour still very pleasant to overall because we're around normal daytime highs and the sun's down so keep that in mind low 60s showing up to our south and upper 50s throughout most of the area still a very comfortable one for you anywhere you look and and on Defender Radar Network, we're quiet. Just a little bit of cloud cover, and you'll see some of that, I think, as we advance through the rest of the overnight. By 11 o'clock, we're in the upper 40s. We go beyond that into the early morning. I think we'll end up in the low 40s, upper 30s by tomorrow morning, and then we're right back into the nice stuff. Daytime highs for you on your Monday into the upper 60s. Of course, the sun sets a little bit earlier, too, so we'll start to see that uh, glow disappear by 4 o'clock, as you see suggested there. I'll break down the rest of the forecast, which includes two powerful fronts, coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thanks, Jim. A Transylvania student's memory will now live on forever on campus. 22-year-old Mary Catherine Stewart died back in March during a hiking accident at Raven Run Nature Sanctuary. The university honored her during graduation last spring, but as Mike Byer shows us, the class of 2016 wanted to make sure she's never forgotten. Today was a special day at Transylvania University. Everybody in? Many family and friends of Katie Stewart, including her parents, were on campus as the Mary Catherine Stewart Pavilion was dedicated in her memory. I think it speaks volumes that so many people came out today, and I think it is um, the fact that it's such a beautiful fall day is so indicative also for Katie. Um, she was just a ray of sunshine. Elaine Bailey was in the same class as Katie and was also one of her closest friends. She says not a day goes by that she doesn't think about Katie and her amazing personality. Katie really made a mark on our Transylvania community. We just loved her dearly and we were devastated when we heard the news of the accident um, because she did have such a profound impact on us. Last March, the former Transylvania student was tragically killed after she fell off an overlook while hiking one of the trails at Raven Run Sanctuary. To keep her legacy alive, the class of 2016 raised over $20,000 to build the pavilion. It was all part of their senior challenge. I can't say enough about how proud I am of the seniors and just their dedication to the project. And I know that it really touched Katie's family, and um, it's just been great to see everybody's reaction. To make the day even more special, Katie's former employers, Crank and Boom Ice Cream and a Cup of Commonwealth, set up shop at the ceremony to provide free drinks and tasty treats. You did a great job. I, I appreciate, really appreciate it very much. Bailey says in the midst of the sadness, today's festivities and this special gathering place has brought her joy. I do believe this pavilion captures her personality in that it is going to be used by so many people. It's going to be um, a place for friends to come and study, to talk, to laugh, and that's what Katie would have wanted. In Lexington, Mike Byer, WKYT.
Back in May, the school presented Stewart's parents with her degree. New tonight, we just learned that the Garrett County coroner has identified a woman found dead inside a home. The coroner says 31 year old Bethany Floyd's death is suspicious. She was found dead inside a home on Price Court in Lancaster last night. The cause of death hasn't been released. Her body was taken to the state medical examiner's office for an autopsy today. Still to come on WKYT, a double dose of UK sports this weekend. The basketball cats are back on the court tonight. Lee K will have a preview in about 10 minutes. Now, your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Jim Caldwell. Very pleasant daytime temperatures here all weekend long with the sunshine that we've been experiencing. Now we're getting into the cooler side of the day, of course, with the sun now gone, by the way, because we set our clocks back last night. It's 59 in Lexington, 54 down the road into Danville, and we've got some low 60s still holding on in the southern and eastern portions of Kentucky, which really isn't that bad, above average for this time of year. Even for daytime highs, we should be even cooler than we are right now. So, we look at our satellite radar on Defender Radar Network, and you're going to find that it's pretty quiet. A uh, little thin band of clouds moving through. We've got some here in Lexington as well, but uh, most of the cloudiness, true cloudiness, showing up to our south. Let's get you past the weekend and to a very important day that I know so many of you have been waiting for. <laughs> the Election Day voting forecast. Polls open at 6 o'clock. I think we'll be a little cool. 47 degrees. Not bad, though. 65, a little breezy by noontime because we're starting to see some of the clouds in the frontal boundary press in. So by the time polls close, we could be dealing with a stray chance of a shower with temperatures around 62 at that point. Let me walk you up to that frontal boundary's arrival time. So overnight, early tomorrow morning, probably into the uh, upper 30s, low 40s. Highs tomorrow, fantastic, into the upper 60s to around 70 degrees. Then we start the morning off, as I mentioned, a little cool, but not bad. The clouds are increasing. This particular run of the model tries best to push rain in here by 5 o'clock. I think it's going to be a little bit slower and later to the party around here. So by the time uh, our polls close at 6 o'clock, Western Kentucky could still be dealing with some rain because it'll be an hour behind, maybe at 5 o'clock. But overall, I think that's the trend. Rain works its way through here during the evening hours. And then as we get into the overnight and early on Wednesday, you can see that cooler air arrived. This is as far as the model will let me go, this particular one. And we're at noon on Wednesday. It's 44 degrees at noon. All right, we'll warm up some, but not much. Probably into the low and mid 50s for highs on Wednesday. The reason? Frontal boundary. It's a big one. Two of them are coming at us. First one sweeps through. Here's what you get it brings a chill 10 to 15 degrees below where we were. The second one gets in here and it has a little more of a bite to it because this one could bring the cold, brings uh, the moisture off the Great Lakes, and could mean that we pick up some flakes around here by next weekend. And I'm not talking accumulation or anything like that. I'm just talking cold enough for some flakes. And you can see why they're in that seven day with highs falling into the 40s on Saturday, 30s as well. So we have it in two steps. Get one cool shot to into Wednesday mm -hmm. and then the next one for the weekend. Hey, it's good to see you. It's good to see you too, <laughs> even if we are talking We about always snow. run into people, to, uh, each other down here, don't we? I know, right? It's always a pleasure, though. Yes. All right, Lee Kay is in next with sports, and the UK basketball team is back on the court tonight. They are, Miranda. The Wildcats host their final exhibition game against Asbury. We will hear from both teams, and it was oh so close for the UK football team on Saturday. Find out what Mark Stoop said his team lacked next in sports. Kentucky had a sixth win teed up on Saturday night against Georgia, but it was the Bulldogs who kicked the game winner. A tough way to lose a hard-fought game. Rob Bromley saw it firsthand at Commonwealth Stadium. There was so much out there for the Wildcats. A sixth win, bowl eligibility, first place in the SEC East, but costly turnovers in the second half. What looked like a touchdown pass turned into an interception. Mark Stoops said his players' hearts and minds were in the right place but not the edge. I really didn't feel like we had an edge about us today, though. I just didn't like um, just a certain look in our eye. I think our players wanted it to happen, and uh, I don't know. I just got to do a better job of uh, getting them to play with that mentality and that edge and that urgency that it takes. We had our chances, and like I said, when you're playing a uh, uh, 
a good team such as Georgia or any SEC team or any team in the nation, really, you have to make those uh, routine plays. We just didn't have the edge. Like he said, we, we, we expected to win this game, but didn't fight to win this game. Um, so that's one thing we need to do come next week with, uh, with Tennessee on our schedule, um, come out and fight for that. The Cats still have a lot to play for. They have five victories, three games left on the schedule, starting with a showdown at Tennessee next Saturday. At Commonwealth Stadium, Rob Bromley, WDKYT. Rob, talking about that game at Tennessee, the Wildcats will have an early wake-up call Saturday at Tennessee. It'll be a noon Eastern kickoff from Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, televised by the SEC Network. The UK basketball team returns to the Rupp floor tonight for its final exhibition contest in a first ever meeting with Asbury, a true David versus Goliath matchup. While David did defeat Goliath in biblical times, it's likely the Wildcats won't have much trouble tonight with the Eagles. However, John Calipari still wants to see his guys compete. He isn't concerned with the executing the plays, but he's more looking for how his guys are competing. My, my thought is the first week of the season, probably the first two weeks, it will be, it'll be a uh, limited, I'll call package, of what we'll do. Limited baseline, limited sideline, limited what we'll do versus zone, limited man offense. And we're just trying to get good at some things right now. So I want them to worry about competing at a high level versus, you know, you know worried about, you know, what am I supposed to be doing out here? Compete. Asbury, as you know, might, get, might have guessed they lack the size that the Wildcats have. Rather than a group of five-star athletes on the roster, the Eagles are just a group of guys who grew up playing basketball in Kentucky, and many of whom are U.K. fans and say playing against the Wildcats is a dream come true. I, I plan to be a little bit overwhelmed. It's, it's just it's the opportunity that I've always wanted to play in front of a crowd like that and uh, to be in that kind of a... Uh, environment that the crowd is just wild and engaged so it's just going to be exciting to play there I've always wanted to. We've been waiting for this opportunity for a long time so I just want to go out and compete and, and uh, see how everything turns out. Uh, like I say we're just excited to play UK. Speaking of exhibition games this afternoon Georgetown College made the short trip to Richmond for a meeting with EKU first half former Fleming County product Troy Stewart left alone he steps into it and hits the triple. Georgetown grabs a 16 to 14 lead. Stewart had a team high 18. EKU's Asante Gist getting the start at point guard and the freshman from East Orange, New Jersey. Impressing early, a team high 22 points. Then Stewart with the dime. Check out the nice look there inside to Jeremiah Tisdale, the former Henry Clay product. And then the Tigers have some nice young talent as well. The Colonels getting it done early from behind the arc. Dylan Avar with the triple. EKU gets to win 83-71. Busy day for exhibitions. Morehead State Eagles. Exhibition play this afternoon hosting Cincinnati Christian early first half. Preseason all OVC selection is Xavier Moon drives to the lane and scores off the glass. Then it's Malik Maitland. Nice assist here to Trishard Williams for the layup underneath. And then Maitland's going to do it himself. Penetrating to the basket, the scoop and the score. Eagles crashing the board here off the miss. Former Breathitt County standout Wes Noble flies in and gets the putback. Moorhead State rolls to the 106-63 victory. And that'll do it for sports. We are back with more after this. Tuesday night's Mega Millions jackpot is $54 million, and Wednesday night's Powerball jackpot is $236 million. You know, that sun today really felt nice. Oh, it was fantastic mm -hmm. out there. Temperatures back well into the 60s today. Tomorrow, we could touch 70, but in our seven day forecast, all of this at the same time, we've got the potential of tracking some flakes of snow by next weekend. Now, we've got a lot of good stuff in between now and then, but when you start talking about snow, that's all in. <laughs> Anybody can see in a seven day that and the fact that the election is Tuesday, late chances of rain. So that weather, mm. as we've always say, weather shouldn't be a reason you don't vote. So get out there and vote. Absolutely. Well, we'll see you back here tonight at 11. Have a great evening.